The mood is somber in court, but not for everyone, even a man accused of mass murder. Paul Ntenge McKenzie, the self-proclaimed pastor and his co-accused, face several charges including terrorism-related offences. The investigations do not just centre on the murder charges and on the mass manslaughter charges that we pointed out to this court earlier on. My lady, we are looking at charges under Porter, we are looking at charges under the Proceeds of Crime and Money Laundering Act. We are looking at very uh, complex investigations, my lady. The case has been transferred to the High Court in Mombasa, where terrorism-related cases can be tried. Mackenzie is accused of urging his followers to starve themselves to death so that they can go to heaven. Police have found the remains of more than a hundred people, including children, on his land. It seems like following Jesus Christ is the biggest crime in the world. Away from the bustle of the courtroom, a mother clings to hope her daughter, husband and three children may still be alive. I know the survivors because I was part of the congregation. I have asked if they have seen my family, but they are not talking. Pathologists are carrying out autopsies to determine the cause of death as the search for more bodies continues. Many Kenyans are still in shock. They're asking how something like this could have gone on for so long undetected. Mackenzie is well known by police and has been arrested several times before. But each time, he was released because of a lack of evidence. Some rights groups say they had received reports of extreme fasting in southeastern Shakahola region as early as February. They accuse the police of not responding fast enough. We thought um, it was a place where these congregants are with the fact that uh, we were told that uh, they were starving or they were fasting, then it wasn't a harmful place. The number of people being rescued is dwindling, while the bodies keep piling up. Michael Apple, Al Jazeera. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kwadash. And double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, you fellow followers. And from time to time, I'm saving you a few sisters and shalom to the elect. <clears throat> you know, so anyway, uh, I want to go in this video here. I did a video on this guy maybe maybe sometime early this week. Mackenzie, I don't remember his name, but he had led a an occult um, church occult and had people starve themselves, including their own children. Now, what kind of religion, right, in, in uh, this day and age, will do something like that. Now, let's say we know th harsh things happen in the Bible because the Lord caused famines. But um, he said to be closer with the Most High God, you and your children must be starved to death. And what goes on in the mind of people that subscribe to that? You got to kind of go with the, what's going on in the mentality of, of certain people's mind that they will follow a church, a, a pastor, one man, to their own destruction. This tells you the power and influence that the, uh, the scriptures has on even on the right hand, but even on the left hand side, right? Because even Satanists, they may dabble into the scriptures. So the hands of the Lord, the Lord showing his power, the hands of the Lord is powerful, right? And um, this is like Ephesians 6 and 10, put on the armor of the Most High. So you know some of their families, they were disappointed to know their loved ones not coming back because they set up in a cave and starved themselves. It's crazy. And now they're saying it's hundreds of bodies, over 100 bodies. This is dangerous Christianity. Jesus the Christ has severely destroyed us. The, the God of our Bible the power of our Bible, what we follow, we'll never think uh, of doing 
uh, anything like this or as far as we teach to do anything like that. Now, there will come a time where people will not be willing, you know, they'll be having a, a not a fast, but a famine where they won't be willing to starve themselves. It's just going to be a thing where they will, which makes it much harder when a mind is set to do something. It's believe it or not, you, you, you're able to cope with it because it's your body. Your mind is controlling the body. But what happens to the people who love to eat? Right? The people who love to eat, then all of a sudden there's no more food coming in. But this is dangerous Christianity. And this is the works of Jesus the Christ. This is why any Israelite group who's calling on Jesus the Christ is out of their mind because this is the image and the message that's portrayed. Right? Any of our people who follow Christianity, they might not been told to starve themselves because we know in different sects they got different things, you know, different sects of religion. But even in Western culture, you know, our people are being starved with knowledge, right? Our people told they're killing themselves with poor diets, poor food, and told to. I mean, through grace, we do the best we can. We eat our food to follow amongst the heathen. But these people are purposely sinning. They're purposely eating pork. When they got to show me one time where the one you call Jesus, Yahabashah, ate anything unclean. So this is the danger of Christianity. I mean, everybody talk about Hebrew Israelites and how it's dangerous. But when you outweigh the pros and the cons of things of even other Israelites that have done things wrong, in a nutshell, this truth has saved our lives. And, and as uh, Apostle Tahar said in a previous video, have we say we're black Africans, black Hamites, we're um, kin to King Tutmost of this and Ramses? Nobody have a problem with that. If we said, hell with the white man, we're all e Egyptian and nobody else can be a part of it. Nobody has a problem with that. But being an Israelite, because of what it entails of and, you know, the history. Why are they so afraid? There should be no issue with that. But anyway, this guy, this man has managed to um, put people in a tomb. Well, they, let me say they did what they did and starved themselves to death, them and their children. They suffered until the death. That shows a bit of dedication. It's on the left-hand side. And that's the mindset when it comes down to the MTOB and the things that's coming to pass that we're going to have to put our mind, our mindset, you know, we're going to have, to have a different mindset. Although the scripture says, behold, my servant shall eat. Right? Isaiah 65, I think. But that mindset of, hey, man, we might be out there and not able to eat. You know? See, these things are, are examples. And um, we're um, to get closer to the Most High. That's going into his, his elect. We'll be martyrs for the truth, right? Things will happen. We'll be put in prisons. All kinds of things. This man have took it in himself to play God, to play the Most High, or play the Most High's top pro, uh, uh, apostle. And this is also going to use those other, um, those other um, Israelites, I mean, those other Christians, they're going to use that as an excuse to do away with the Bible. Anyway, Matthew 24, 24, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders in it so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Um, now, that's also going into the thing, not like this, but this is also going into other Israelites who's teaching a totally different doctrine to deceive the elect. Like, you don't have to call on the name of the Lord. This is a prime example of why you should not call on Jesus the Christ. 
Nobody should be calling on Jesus the Christ. This is a horrible example of poor Christianity. And this is what it's done to us. Our people will still die for that white Jesus. I guarantee you when they was on their last uh, breath or their, their, their suffering, they was picturing Jesus the Christ in their head. Guarantee it. They didn't think of a black Jesus. This is why Eve is so submissive to Edom. Because Jesus is in power. Jeremiah 14 and 14. Then the Lord said to me, the prophets are prophesying lies in my name. Right? There we go. I have not sent them or appointed them to be spoken to them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions, divinations, idolatries, and delusions of their own minds. Right? Prophes prophesying to them, you know, great wonders, you know, future beauties of life. Okay, of knowledge of, of how they'll be delivered with the rapture. That's what these these uh, preachers are doing, right? Um, Deuteronomy 18. I'm going to see where this is. And 19. Uh, and I shall, and that shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require of it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, Jesus the Christ, even that prophet shall die. Right? Even that prophet shall die. So this is this is serious business. This is really why I was going to try to just go into this guy um, and what he's doing, the wickedness of um, that that religion of Christi, Christ, Christianity, especially in over there across the seas. It's a horrible. It, it's it's a terrible place. Over here is just a little more modernized, but it still has the same gimmicks you know and everything else telling you to make certain sacrifices don't worry about this don't worry about that but just suffer it's the same concept but it's just more drastic and extreme over there people are spending their money in the collection plates they're going completely broke they're spending money they just don't have they're losing their homes you know all kinds of stuff you know um, it says uh, Ezekiel 13 and 8 Therefore thus saith the Lord Yahweh Because ye have spoken vanity And seen lies Therefore behold I am against you Saith the Lord Yahweh And my hand shall be upon the prophets That see vanity That divine lies That shall not be In the assembly of my people Neither shall they be written Okay in the house of Israel neither uh, shall they enter into the land of Israel and shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh right it says because even uh, because even because they have seduced my people saying peace and there was no peace right um, that's in Jeremiah 8 and 11 as well and one built up a wall, and lo, others dubbed, dubbed it, uh, uh, it with untempered mortar. Say unto them which dub it was untempered mortar, that I shall that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstones, shall fall, and, uh, and a stormy wind shall rend it. So these Christians, they're trying to build up this, this so-called temple, right? And they're, they're physically got these funds and building these houses and the centers and everything else. Like, guess what? The most high, when the missiles come, all these churches are going to be destroyed, man. There won't be 
There won't be any more churches. There won't be any more pain. I believe 1 Corinthians 15 says, and death, the old sting of death shall be swallowed up. Right? Because our people need to be saved from themselves, man. You know, you can't get, you can't get any, uh, you can't get any worse than this. Let's look up this word, daub. Okay. You can't get any worse than this, man. This is bad news. And we can see clearly how it would be easy to trick people. I don't know what the other groups are talking about with the M MOTB. Man, if these people are willing to sit up there and die for a preacher, you're going to have a lot of people willing to die, you know, for men. They weren't willing to die for the Lord. You got these people accept anything. We'll say don't do it. These people will sacrifice their lives, right, and take the MOTB, right, sacrifice their souls. They will sell out. It says to cover or coat with soft adhesive matter. You know, so that's what they did, built it up and made it all nice. And guess what? The Lord just is going to tear it all down, man. You know, the Lord is just going to tear it all down. But, I, you know, I don't have nothing else to say. It's just that this is definitely dangerous Christianity. And this is what Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ have done. How much has it destroyed our people? And um, our people will still go into those Christian churches, man. Knowing that Jesus the Christ, they all know that Jesus, well, I'm going to say Yahweh Shah, they all know he wasn't a white man. Even Christians admit it. But the simple fact is they lied about that. So if they lied about that, what else have they lied about? They haven't been truthful. They lied about who the real people of the Bible is. They lied and about who stole the land or how they got there and all that. They just lie about everything. They're liars. Nahum 3 and 1 says, Woe to the bloody city. It's all full of lies and robbery. And they've robbed our inheritance. You look at the people, man. Especially West Africa, where our, where our people are at too. They're the worst. That's all I have on that show, Wong.